I'm here with the two bargaining committees representing over 5,000 bus drivers, maintenance workers, and obviously we're here to find a settlement because we know of the labor dispute, the impending labor dispute that's going to be happening tonight at midnight. So the objective today is to find a settlement. I'll be meeting with Kevin Desmond today at noon and we'll have some exploratory discussions which we hope will lead to meaningful negotiations because our objective is to reach a tentative agreement tonight to avoid the shutdown. If in fact we can't reach a tentative agreement tonight, uh, the full strike will start tonight at midnight. It will last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and we will resume um, uh, driving back on Saturday. This is a last result and I'm saying this and I'm saying it quite passionately that we are hoping to find a settlement. We have been working without a collective agreement for the better part of eight months. So for eight months we've been trying to find a settlement that is fair. For the last three and a half weeks we have been on a work to rule campaign where our, where our drivers have been wearing, you know, blue jeans t-shirts. We've had overtime man. We have done everything to try to get attention of those that make the decisions. But when you're in bargaining with, with bus drivers, it's quite difficult because you've got the federal government puts the money in for infrastructure, you've got the provincial governments, you've got the municipal governments, you've got the board of directors, you've got all these players with skin in the game, but yet nobody likes to take ownership of the issue. And herein lies the, prog uh, herein lies, uh, the, the problem here today. So one of the key issues, and there are several issues as it relates to working conditions and of course salaries. And I think one of our frustrations is that when we talk about parity and we talk about adjustments, you have bus drivers in Toronto that make $2.85 an hour more than drivers here in Vancouver. And so that is a huge problem. We're trying to figure a way that we can start to make some incremental changes and gains uh, to start to bring together and compress the wage differences. We all know the standard of living, the wages, excuse me, the, the cost of living in Vancouver and the lower mainland is absolutely expensive. So we're not looking for a fight by any stretch of the imagination. We're clearly looking for a settlement, but we can't do this playing solitaire. So like I said, I'll be meeting with, with uh, Kevin Desmond fairly shortly as we try to move um, the barriers towards a settlement. So there are a lot of issues that the bargaining committees have been working towards. We've been trying to figure out how people can drive buses for eight hours a day with little or no brakes. With, you know, in some circumstances using porta potties. In some circumstances when we're stopped at terminus. Even though the times that are used to check the bus to see if people have left any items on the bus, somehow it's credited towards our break times, which makes no sense. I mean, nobody, nobody in any other profession goes to work for eight hours and doesn't get a bona fide period of time of which they can have their lunch. Workers, regardless of your industry, when you want to go to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom. I mean, they're basics. So these are some of the issues, if you can imagine, we're plowing through when we are making some headway, but we're far from there. So issues that people take for granted, your standard of living and your working conditions that you take for granted, they don't take them for granted. So we need to fix these things and we need to fix them today because our bus drivers and frankly the riders should know that their bus driver has proper brakes, are feeling good, are... So this is really about the safety of our drivers as well and we're absolutely concerned about that. So we have all day today and like I said, I'm here to settle, I'm not here to fight because anybody can fight so it's really about finding a collective agreement that everyone can live with. And with that, does anyone have any questions for me today? Yes. Well, there's, look, there's no question this can be avoided. I mean, we need to find out how we're going to compress the gap. We need to nail down some of those working conditions that I was talking. This isn't very complicated, and we have all day. 
We have till midnight. I've put together much more complex collective agreements than this in a much shorter period of time. So it's all about desire and it's all about a will to find a settlement. Well, we're talking about, you know, first of all, there's a go basically a government mandate of 2%. But the question becomes is how do we get adjustments in place uh, that start to compress the gap between uh, drivers in the lower mainland and, of course, uh, drivers in Toronto. But it's not only that, there's other benefits that we need to talk about and other working conditions more than, you know, what I've just identified. But like I said, we have all kinds of time. We have all day today and we're here to settle. And if, in fact, there is a willingness to settle, then I expect we'll get there. But we're never going to do this, just like I said, playing solitaire. We need somebody that can make decisions and somebody that's prepared to make decisions. Because um, if you take a look at the board right now of TransLink, I mean, you have a board with a lot of people who, frankly, should be the ones entrusted to make the decisions and are taking a hands-off approach. So the fact that uh, Mr. Desmond came forward and started to take a more of a public role means that at least people are starting to understand that what's going to happen tonight at midnight is real. This isn't a bluff. So this is about finding a settlement, and that's why we're here today. It's too early to tell. I mean, as of now, we're having a strike at midnight. Um, if we get a few minutes before midnight, it all depends on where we're at. But as of now, there's going to be a strike at midnight. How far apart are the two sides of this Look, I'm not going to get into straight numbers. I'd rather bargain with Mr. Desmond. But we're, our, our differences right now are significant. How likely do you think you will be to actually come to an agreement tonight? I am the most optimistic person around. I believe that we can find a settlement. But it takes somebody that knows how to negotiate and wants to negotiate because the deal is there to be had. Is the wage still the biggest challenge? The wage is a significant challenge, and the wages are a significant problem that we need to get our head around. It's not going to go away. Can you tell us about your involvement at this stage? Why, why is it that you come at this particular The way our organization is structured is that when we have our members and communities that need some leadership, then we all pull together. So I'm here to work with the bargaining committees, I'm here to work with Gavin, I'm here to work with Chris. So we've got all a lot of firepower in here, but it's also our way of saying to all levels of government and to TransLink, we need business. So I'm here to pass on a message that we want to settle.